So Samsung had a couple of hiccups in releasing One UI 3 for the Galaxy S10 Plus, but finally, after a bit of delay, the official stable version of One UI 3, which is the Android 11 update, is now out for the Galaxy S10 Plus. And in this video, I'm going to show you everything that is new with this update. Oh, and the time code is in the video description. In case you want to skip to any particular part, you can easily do that. And also what I have noticed is that a lot of you guys keep asking me about my wallpapers. So I use my very own clicks as my wallpapers. I do not use any third party wallpapers. But what I will do is I will put the download link to this wallpaper in the video description so that you guys can download this and use it as your very own wallpaper. Anyways, let's go ahead and start the video. So the first major feature that this update brings is that now you have widgets on your always on display and the lock screen. So I will just make sure that the always on display is turned on and I will put the phone to sleep, wait for the clock to appear. So now on the always on display, you have to double tap the clock. And if you swipe down, that will open up widgets that appear on your always on display. So this is a new feature. You have your music player widget. You can seek through your song, play pause buttons, weather widget, digital well-being widget, you have today's schedule and you also have your alarm and you also have these widgets on your lock screen. So let's wake the phone up and if you tap on the clock, that will open up widgets that appear on your lock screen. So this is the exact same thing that you have on the always on display, but these appear on the lock screen. And if you want to reorder them or disable them, you can go to settings, it's unlock. And from over here, you can disable some of them if you don't like or reorder them. So this is a new feature that One UI 3 brings to the Galaxy S10 Plus and I really love this feature, especially the widgets on the always on display. One UI 3 also brings double tap to sleep to the Galaxy S10 Plus and we already had double tap to wake. So the way this works is that you double tap on an empty area on your home screen and that will put the phone to sleep. Let me show you how to enable this. So drop down the notification panel and go to settings scroll down to advanced features and then tap on motion and gestures and make sure double tap to turn off screen is enabled. So this is the feature that allows you to turn the phone off by double tapping on an empty area on the home screen. Samsung has also updated the dynamic lock screen and now you have five new categories and this is the special category. So let me go ahead and show you what's new in the dynamic lock screen. So we will go to wallpapers wallpaper services and here is the new dynamic lock screen as you can see now you have 10 categories previously you only had five and what's new over here is that now you can select up to five categories and that will shuffle the wallpapers between those five categories so i have selected landscapes dogs cats animal and special and now the phone will shuffle the wallpapers between these categories that's kind of awesome so that gives you a lot more flexibility. And now you can also change your dynamic lock screen settings right from your lock screen. So you have to tap that and that will take you to the dynamic lock screen categories. You don't even need to unlock your phone. So here's an interesting feature. This update allows you to set a custom video or a still image as your calling screen background. So right now I'm receiving a phone call and you can see a video is playing back. So let me show you how to do this because it's kind of awesome. On your phone, open up the dialer, then press on these three dots and then select settings. Then tap on call background. Over here, you have two options, layout and background. So you can also change the layout. So this is the second layout, but we want to change the background. So I will tap on background and then press on the plus icon. Just pick a video or a still image from your gallery. I'll just pick this video for demonstration. Now it says your video is too large, so we are going to crop this. So after you finish trimming the video, you also get an option which says use video sound as ringtone. So you can actually use the video sound as a ringtone. So let's enable this and set this as the calling screen background. Let me give myself a call and I will demonstrate. So now whenever you get a phone call, that video that you have just set as the calling screen background is going to play. And you can also hear the video sound is playing back as our ringtone. How awesome is that? Or if you set a still image, you'll see a still image as the background. 
and you will also see the background whenever you make a phone call so right now i'm making a phone call from this phone and you can see we have a custom background instead of the default blue background so this is a really cool feature i love this this update also brings plenty of new visual changes and new animations to the Galaxy S10 Plus. The first thing that you will notice is that whenever you drop down the notification panel, the drop down animation is slightly different. So it kind of fades onto the screen rather than just dropping down like it used to on One UI 2.5. And I think this new animation makes the phone feel a lot more classier. The second thing you will notice the drop down notification panel is now translucent so you can actually see the background and you will always see the background no matter what app you have opened so it is always translucent on one ui 2.5 the drop down notification panel was completely opaque so if you have dark mode turned on it will be black if you switch off dark mode it will be white but it is opaque this one on the other hand if you switch off dark mode you will notice that you can still see the background. So slight visual changes here and there. And also speaking of new animation, if you go to recents, you will notice that the phone focuses on the app that's in the middle. So it kind of enlarges the window. On the previous version, this does not happen. So it does not focuses on the app that's in the middle. And since I already have my social media account open over here, if you enjoy watching, do make sure to follow me on my social media accounts. I will put all the links in the video description and do make sure to subscribe to me on my YouTube channel in case you enjoy watching videos like this. All right, let's continue. Android 11 also improves the way the phone displays and handles notifications in the drop down notification panel. So first off, if you have the music player running, you will see the music player notification right over here. Now what's new over here is that you can swipe down and you will see the music player controls right over here in the drop down notification panel. Now this is for Samsung music because on One UI 2.5, even though we are running the latest version of Samsung music, I cannot actually swipe it down to reveal the seek controls. I have to open the music player up and then I will get the seek controls. Now, in case you have multiple music players on your phone, so for example, I also have Samsung Music that's going to play some track. Now, if I drop down the notification panel, I can actually shuffle between the music players right from the notification panel. So this is Amazon Music, swipe, and we are back to Samsung Music. So that makes it super easy to shuffle between the music players. And if you tap this icon, it takes you to the place where you can shift your audio from the Bluetooth headset back to the phone or back to the bluetooth headset or the speaker then you also have the play pause buttons so yeah they have definitely made some improvements to the way the phone handles the music player in the drop down notification panel and secondly i have also noticed that the phone now groups up conversations in the drop down notification panel you can see all our conversations from whatsapp and snapchat are grouped up over here rest of the notifications are over here at the bottom on One UI 2.5, you have all your notifications together. So conversations, YouTube notifications, they are all together. But this one will group up different types of notifications together. Now you also have notification history. In case you have accidentally dismissed a notification, you can go to settings, then go to notifications, scroll down to advanced settings and go to notification history to see your recent notification. But first you have to turn this thing on. So what I'll do is I'll dismiss all of these. So now we can go to advanced settings and go to notification history to check our recently dismissed notifications. So very useful in case you have accidentally dismissed something, you, you can enable notification history and check your recently dismissed notifications from over here. Edge lighting has also been relocated from display to notifications. So on One UI 2.5, you would find edge lighting under notification, then edge screen, and there is edge lighting over here. On One UI 3, they have relocated this to notification. So go to settings, tap on notification, and now edge lighting is called brief pop-up. So if you go to brief pop-up settings, you would find edge lighting over here. So it is the exact same thing. They have just relocated this to another menu. And I think this is a good idea because edge lighting is nothing but notification. Now, one very important thing that a lot of people miss out is that edge lighting only works when the notification pop-up style is set to brief. If you set this to detailed, edge lighting will not work. Let me demonstrate. 
So first I will set this to brief and I'll send myself a message. So edge lighting is working perfectly fine. But if I set this to detailed, edge lighting will not work. So you can see edge lighting did not work. So make sure you have set this to brief in order for the edge lighting to work. Very, very important. Now, if you go to notification settings and if you scroll down to advanced settings and then go to floating notifications, you will see a new option called bubbles. So this is a new feature of Android 11. It kind of provides you with chat head style notification for text messages only. And you guys already know what smart pop-up view is. It is Samsung's version of bubbles and we had smart pop-up view for a very long time. So let me demonstrate these two. First off, bubbles, I'll send myself a text message. So I've got a text message and what I'll do is drop down the notification panel and when you tap on this button that will open up a chat head. So this is sort of a new feature but I think Samsung phones have had this feature in the form of smart pop-up view. So unfortunately the limitation of bubbles is that it only works for text messaging applications. It will not work for third-party applications so if I send myself a text message over WhatsApp you can see there is no chat bubble option over here. Tapping it will open up WhatsApp. But if you set this to smart pop-up view, that is Samsung's version of bubbles, you will get chat head for third-party applications like Snapchat, WhatsApp, and other compatible applications. But first, we need to include WhatsApp in the smart pop-up view list. So check this out. Now, if I send myself a text message over WhatsApp, you will get chat head style notifications. And I can tap on this and quickly text back and minimize this and that's it and no matter what I'm doing on my phone that chat head bubble will always be there I can tap resume the messenger tap over here and minimize it once again and if you want to remove this long press and bring it to the bottom of the screen Android 11 introduces a new way to add widgets to the home screen so now if an application supports a widget all you need to do is long press the app icon and you will see a widget option over here. So just tap on this, select a widget and then press on add to add widgets to the home screen. They have also repositioned the volume controls. So on the previous version, you would get volume controls at the top of the screen and you press on this button to enlarge the volume control. But on one UI 3, the volume control appears on the side where the button is located. So on the Galaxy S10 Plus, the button is on the left. So you get the volume controls on the left side. Now, if you want to see more volume controls, you press on this button and that opens up the full volume controls. And this is your live caption option over here and tap on the gear icon to go to the main volume settings. Oh, and fun fact, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra has the volume controls on its right side. So the volume control panel appears onto the right but on the Note 10 Plus, the volume control is on the left, so it appears on the left side. So that's a neat little quirk. It kind of makes it very easy to change the volume because it's near the button. Samsung has completely redesigned the power saving modes on One UI version 3. So what I'll do is drop down the notification panel and we will go to the power saving modes. So this is how it looks like on Android 11 or One UI 3. On One UI 2.5, it used to look like this. Now don't panic if you don't see the high performance mode or maximum power saving mode because all of the One UI 2.5 functionality is still there on One UI 3. So let me show you how it works on One UI 3 versus One UI 2.5. So when the power saving mode is off, the phone will be in optimized mode just like it is on One UI 2.5. When you switch on the power saving mode on One UI 3, the phone will be in medium power saving mode. So when you switch it on, the always on display will be off, CPU speed will be limited and the brightness will decrease by 10%. That is exactly the same as medium power saving. Now the fourth option on One UI 3, limit apps and home screen is maximum power saving. So if we switch this thing on and then turn on power saving mode, you will see it is exactly the same as maximum power saving. And did you notice how fast One UI 3 is compared to One UI 2.5? This one is still working. Meanwhile, our S10 Plus on One UI 3 has already switched on maximum power saving mode. So as you can see, it is the exact same thing. They have just renamed it. Now, as for high performance mode, what I want you guys to do is drop down the notification panel on your phone, then tap on these three dots then tap on edit buttons and drag and drop enhanced processing from over here 
down to your drop down notification panel buttons. So now you have enhanced processing over here and enhanced processing is exactly the same thing as high performance on one UI 2.5. So you can switch this thing on to get faster data processing for all apps except games and this uses more battery just like it does on one UI 2.5. And lastly, as for adaptive power saving, that feature is also there on One UI 3. So drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to battery and device care, then tap on these three dots and then go to automation. And over here, you will find adaptive power saving. So yes, all of the features are still there. They have just been relocated and renamed. They've also brought back the classic style of battery stats. So again, in the device care menu, we will go to battery. And then if you tap over here, the phone now actually shows you the screen on time since last full charge and I unplugged my phone 18 hours ago. So on One UI 2.5 this feature was kind of removed so if you go to battery and then battery usage you'll see that the phone does not show screen on time since last full charge. You'll have to calculate that manually. But on One UI 3 they have brought back that feature but if you want to check the last 7 days of use you can always do that by tapping over here. By the way, the battery life is surprisingly good. So I have three hours and 32 minutes of screen on time and I still have 55% charge remaining. Looks like the S10 Plus is giving better battery backup than the Galaxy Note 10 Plus. Surprising. And you can see my usage over here. I have been using my phone normally, but yeah, I am happy to report that the battery backup is good on One UI 3. So now let's go to the gallery and let me show you a couple of changes over here. So first off, the zooming in and zooming out animation feels a lot more smoother. Although I do like the older animation more than this one. So on One UI 2.5, it used to zoom in and zoom out like this. I really liked how those thumbnails shift their places on the previous version. This one feels a lot more smoother though. And next up, you might have noticed all of the icons have been moved from the top of the screen, these ones, and also some of the options in this menu are down over here in this little menu. So that kind of makes it very easy to operate the phone with one hand because your thumb can easily reach all of these icons. Another very important change you will notice is that now the image editor can revert the photo back to its original form even after saving the photo that you have edited. So there you go, we have now reverted the photo back to its original form. Let me show you. So this is our photo. I will press on the pencil icon over here to get into the image editor. So I will crop the photo and I will also apply a filter. Let's apply the warm filter and I will now save the photo. And you will also notice that the image editor did not create a separate copy of the photo like it used to do on One UI 2.5. It has edited the original photo and saved it. Now the great part is that you can go back into the image editor and revert all the changes that you have done. So there you go. The photo is now back to its original form and then you can save it. And as you can see, the photo is back to its original form. But if you want to create a separate copy of your edited photo, you can still do that. So we will go back into the image editor. I will crop. Let's apply a filter. Right, so now instead of pressing this save button, I will tap on these three dots and we will select save copy. So that actually creates a separate copy of the photo. You can see this is a separate copy and the original photo is right over here. So that's a very important change in the photo editor. I think you guys will absolutely love this because it doesn't create a separate copy. Plus, if you want, you can always restore the original version. You might have noticed the menu that pops up whenever you want to share a photo, video or pretty much any file on your phone. So this menu contains a list of applications and actions that you can use to share a photo or pretty much any file on your phone. What's new in One UI 3 is that now you can pin applications over here. On the previous version of Android, it would show you your recently used applications. Now say for example, I want to share this photo on Snapchat, but I don't have Snapchat over here. I will have to look for Snapchat and there it is. But on this version, I can have the app permanently pinned over here. So it's easier to share stuff. And the way you pin applications to this list is by long pressing and then select pin. That's it. And now you will have the application or an action pinned over here 
permanently. So guys, if you use Samsung keyboard and if you text a lot, you're gonna love the next set of features. So first off, Samsung keyboard will auto suggest AR emoji, bitmoji and stickers based on what you are typing. So I have typed out hey and you can see Samsung keyboard is auto suggesting bitmoji. So I can just tap and send this over to my friend. How awesome is that? And you also might have noticed it will suggest emoji right over here. Now if you want this feature to work, you will need to go to settings and make sure suggest stickers while typing is enabled. If you have downloaded bitmoji on your phone, you will see the bitmoji option. Otherwise you will have AR emoji, which is Samsung's version of bitmoji. And the next feature is whenever you copy some text, for example, let's copy this text, copy, and you will notice that the copied text appears on top of the keyboard. So you no longer have to long press and then press the paste button. You can just tap over here and the copied text will be pasted and you can send it over. Very, very convenient. So check this feature out, guys. I'm going to type something and the phone will read the alphabets and the word out aloud. A W E Awesome T Thanks C O O L Cool. So this feature is called Speak Keyboard Input Allowed and what this feature does is that it reads out the alphabets and the words that you type. So if you want to enable this, go to keyboard settings, then scroll down and tap on swipe, touch and feedback, then tap on Speak Keyboard Input Allowed and enable this. You might want to select characters and words if you want the phone to read out both character and words, otherwise select characters or select words. I prefer character and word. So these were about 22 major changes that the One UI 3 or the Android 11 update brings to the Galaxy S10 Plus. Now I'm gonna move on to the smaller less known features but but before that guys a lot of you guys ask me how do you check what's new with an update. Well drop down the notification panel and go to settings scroll all the way down and then tap on software update and then tap on last update. So this is the screen that shows you what is actually new in an update. And as you can see, this update does bring quite a lot of new features to the Galaxy S10 Plus. All right, so let's continue. Now coming to the camera, I haven't really noticed anything new over here, but it does say that take pictures quicker with improved autofocus and auto exposure. So they might have tweaked the algorithm a little bit. But one thing I did notice is that now when you press the screen, you get this circle with a lock icon on the top and you just press on the lock icon to lock the focus system and the exposure. And you can then tweak the exposure from this little bar. Now on One UI 2.5, if you tap the screen once, that will not show you the lock icon. If you want to lock the autofocus and the exposure, you have to press the screen and hold your finger there until you see this yellow circle. So they have kind of tweaked it a little bit and the exposure control is over here. This one has the exposure control near the circle. They've also added recycle bin for text messages. So in the text messaging app, whenever you delete a message, it will go into the recycle bin rather than getting deleted permanently. So from the recycle bin, you can go ahead and restore the message or if you want, you can delete it permanently. Oh, and just a side note, if you delete individual messages inside a conversation, they will also go into the recycle bin. So if I delete this, that particular message will go into the recycle bin. So you can choose to delete the entire conversation or pick out individual messages from the conversation. And that will also move the deleted messages inside the recycle bin. So this one you already might have noticed, but they have upgraded the digital well-being widget. So now it shows you a colored bar and the list of apps that you have been using throughout the day and the screen on time. Previously, it only used to show you the screen on time and number of times you have unlocked the phone. And if you don't know what digital well-being is, it kind of keeps a track on how many apps and how you have been using your phone throughout the day so that you can take a look at this and moderate your daily use. And the number of times you have unlocked is over here. Now, if you go to contacts and if you tap over here and go to manage contacts, you will see a new option here which says delete duplicate contacts. So this feature allows you to delete any duplicate contacts if you have them. Interestingly, the previous version does not have this option. I do remember one UI 
2 had this, but I'm not sure if they removed it. So on One UI 2.5, if you go to manage contact, that option delete duplicate contacts is not there. So yeah, that is strange. They might have removed it and now they are adding it back. Android Auto is now a part of the Android system. Previously, it was a separate download from the Play Store. So if you drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down to advanced features, you will see Android Auto option is now embedded into the system. So Android Auto is a lot like Apple CarPlay. If you have a compatible head unit in your car, you can stream music, videos, make phone calls and access Google Maps directly from the car's head unit. And also they have updated the Bixby Routines app. So this is the brand new updated Bixby Routines. Now I'm not gonna go into too much details, then this video will become 30 plus minutes long. But yeah, they have updated the Bixby Routines app. By the way, couple of features have been removed. So starting with the option of hiding the camera cutout. So if you drop down the notification panel, go to settings, go to display. And if you go to full screen apps, you will notice that the three dots have been removed. Now on One UI 2.5, if you go to full screen apps and tap on these three dots, you have the option of going into advanced settings then hiding the camera cutout. But first, let me switch off dark mode so that you can actually see the camera cutout. So this is the Galaxy M51. If you turn on hide camera cutout, that effectively disables the top part of the display, adds a little bit of bezel, but then you cannot see the camera cutout. So that option has been removed. I personally have never used this option, but it is something to keep in mind. This camera cutout is not intrusive at all. And finally, you will not be able to use Wi-Fi Direct to send files to other devices. Instead, you will need to use Nearby Share. So if you go to Gallery and for example, I want to share this video, you will no longer see the Wi-Fi Direct option over here. Instead, you can use Quick Share or nearby share so these two options are there and i think that's fine because wi-fi direct never really worked properly on my phone anyways by the way wi-fi direct is still there so if you go to connections wi-fi tap on these three dots and you can see wi-fi direct is still there on the phone oh and a lot of you guys ask me about the battery life well on one ui3 the battery life is pretty good so i unplugged my phone one day seven hours ago and still have 25% charge remaining with a screen on time of 5 hours and 48 minutes and I have been using my phone like I usually do. So yeah, I don't think you have to worry about the battery life on One UI 3 because it is pretty good. Alright guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope it was helpful. If it was, make sure to hit the like and subscribe to the channel for more content. And if you have any doubts or questions, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer them. So thank you guys for watching, stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.